All right, so velocity, another calculator question. All right, the particle moves along the x-axis so that its velocity at time t is given by, and then you got this ugliness, but again, you're going to use a calculator. Okay, this part's really important. At time t equals 0, the particle is at position x equals 1. So it starts at x equals 1. Okay, A, find the acceleration of the particle at time equals 2. Is the speed of the particle increasing at t equals 2? Why or why not? So when we answered this one, we need a reasoning behind it as well. Okay, so acceleration at t equals 2. Acceleration is the derivative of velocity. So what we can do to find the acceleration is we can find v prime of 2. In your calculator, that would be math 8. And then you're literally plugging in 2. And you get that as your answer. So there's your acceleration. So at time equals 2, we want to know if the speed is increasing or decreasing. We want to know if we're speeding up or slowing down. So if you're speeding up versus slowing down, you need to look at acceleration and velocity. Because if they're opposite signs, then you're slowing down. But if they're the same sign, if they're both positive or they're both negative, then you're going to be speeding up. So look back at your notes for that. Okay, so acceleration was positive, and I'm saying velocity at 2 is negative, so, so literally I plug in a 0 to this equation, and then I get a negative number, so my speed is not increasing. I don't say decreasing only because they asked, is it increasing? So I like to answer the question as is, so I say it's not increasing. Okay, the second part, find all times t in the open interval from 0 to 3 when the particle changes direction. All right, so we want to know when it changes direction. So we want to graph v of t, we want to graph that velocity, and see when it equals 0. So that part's really important. The particle changes direction when the velocity equals 0. Okay, on the interval from 0 to 3, I'm going to show you on the calculator real quick what that looks like. So right here I have my equation, and then when I graph it, I have this. My window, I changed from 0 to 3, and then from negative 3 to 3, just so I can see everything a little bit better. So from 0 to 3, I see right here there's one time where we're changing from negative to positive velocity. And I want to find that value right there. So second calc, and I'm finding my zeros. So I go to the left, press enter. I go to the right, press enter. I press enter one more time. And I have that big ol' x equals 2 point blah, 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 blah. So this velocity equals 0 when t equals 2.506. Since, and I have to justify my answer, remember? So since the velocity changes from negative to positive at that time. So that is enough. But if you want to be real specific about it, you can say specifically the velocity is negative. So that says the velocity is negative on this interval from 0 to 2.5. And then the velocity is positive on the interval from 2.5 to 3. So we see that in the graph. It's under the x-axis, and then it's above the x-axis. So either of those are going to be fine to get you that last point for your justification as well. Okay, C. Find the total distance traveled by the particle from 0 to 3. Total distance traveled. That is going to be a bigger number than your position. So you are looking for your absolute value of your velocity. So from 0 to 3 is going to be one part, and then your absolute value of the velocity, plug it into your calculator, and then you get that as your answer. Make sure that you can do this. Make sure it's all okay like that, okay, on your calculator. Okay, D, last one. And this is the trickiest part, I think. So during the interval from 0 to 3, what is the greatest distance between the particle and the origin? Okay, so at zero, we are at position x equals one. So that's the distance. At zero, we're one unit away. And then 
there's some other special places where something might happen. And then at three, we need three. So at three, we're one unit away plus however far we went. So basically, I'm looking for my critical values. And I already found that critical value. So t equals zero, and then t equals 2.5, and I wrote out that whole thing because now I realize that I need to use that value to find another answer. So I'm going to let that equal m, just to give it another letter. And then I need my t equals 3. So I want to find how far am I, how far am I, how far am I. So again, at 0, you're one unit away. It says the position is x equals 1. Okay. At time 2.5, blah, blah, blah. I'm one unit plus this is my new distance, right? So this is how far I am from my origin. So this plus gives me that. This I can literally plug into my calculator. I'm doing, what is it, math nine, I think. And then at time equals three, again, I'm one unit away plus, and then this is how far I am after three uh, seconds, I think it is. Okay, so then I have this number. So I have a one, I have a negative, I have a negative. So think about this on, like, let's say, a number line. So you're one unit away, and then you're negative two point something, and then you're negative one point something, but you want to find the distance. So if you want to find the distance, I need positive distances. So you can see right here, I said, okay, well really, the distance here is one, the distance here is 1.19, and the distance here is 2.26. So 2.6 is bigger than 1.1, which is bigger than one. So this tells me that this distance is gonna be the furthest and then that time is my final answer. At time 2.506 is the greatest distance between the particle and the origin. So final answer, and then this is my proof along with those values right there. So that's what they really wanna see. Okay, so that one's kind of tricky. Leave comments if you have a question about it on Google Classroom. Okay.